To me, debt is a two-way street. It can be a tool or it can be something that holds you back. Debt sounds scary to many folks because it limits the financial freedoms that we have. I think within society, debt is just pictured as negative completely and, and it's not taught how it could be a positive thing and how it could be used as a tool. I think that debt can be a choice. If you spend your money on things that you need, then you, you know, you're making wise choices. But if you're spending your money on unnecessary things, that's when it becomes bad. If I make a choice today, how is that going to impact my financial situation down the line? Welcome to Money in the Brain, where we explore different ways people think about personal finance. I'm Ian Cohen from PayPal. In our first episode, we took a look at inflation and the impact it has on both our minds and our wallets. Today, we'll be examining debt, the ways in which people borrow money and how it can be a burden or a prudent investment. Here in the United States, debt is practically a way of life. Consumers currently carry over $17 trillion in debt. That's an average of over $100,000 per household. It includes mortgages, student loans, credit cards, car loans, and much more. In other countries, however, people may be far less likely to borrow and in many cases perceive debt completely differently. To try and understand the different types of debt, explore what is healthy debt versus bad debt, and take a look at the psychological stigma around debt in different cultures, I spoke with Alejandra Martinez Marquina, a behavioral experimental economist and assistant professor at the University of Southern California Marshall School of Business. I'm a behavioral economist. Whether that means it's hard to describe, so I, I won't even try. But basically, uh, my work recently has been about how people make financial decisions and when they are making bad financial decisions, try to understand why they are making those bad financial decisions. That's more or less what I do in a nutshell. I have not looked in the dictionary today to see what the definition of debt is, but to you, how would you simply explain debt if I were to look it up? Basically, debt is using today the resources you're going to have in the future. And you're paying a cost of doing that. So given that you're paying a cost to move these resources from the future to the present, make sure you're making a good use of them. Is there a thing between good debt and bad debt, or did I make that up? I think people, rather than thinking about good debt or bad debt, the initial thing is, what am I using the debt for? And the use of the debt is what it tells you if it's good or bad. So let me be more specific. There's basically two things that you can use that for. One is to finance consumption. Maybe you want to have a nice vacation, a dinner out. And another thing is a long-term investment, maybe buying a house, maybe going to college, get a master's degree. Overall, what we have is people are using that a lot for the first, for consuming a lot. This is what, in general, we might be worried that people have too much debt. This is the bad debt. And when... We are talking about long-term investments, like, as I said, education or buying a home. We have evidence that people might not be doing enough of that. So that's kind of the good debt that we want people to have more of it. That's kind of more or less where the tension is. We take a mortgage out on a home. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we think about that as debt. We think about it as, hey, I'm able to buy a home. What you want to think is, what am I using the debt for? It's something that's going to generate me a return. It's something that's going to be beneficial to me in the long term. That's good debt. Am I borrowing to just do something that maybe generates a cost or it doesn't give me any return? That is bad debt. Once you start thinking about what do you get out of it, what's the cost of borrowing, that's where you can make it good and bad decisions. That's the main mindset that people should have. So there are a lot of terms out there in mm -hmm. regards to debt. Um, what are some that people might hear that are watching this right now and, and what should they know about those terms? So one was this idea of debt-free premium. And there's this idea that people really like being debt free. And sometimes they might try to reach that point too fast. Like what I told you about paying your home mortgage a bit too fast. The other one is this idea of debt aversion that people hate borrowing altogether. So even if they have a good opportunity that the one you mentioned, like fixing your home, they say, oh, I don't want to do it because I just hate debt so much. I don't even want to touch it. And there's also this idea of uh, what we call in, econo in behavioral economics, present bias, which basically means that People weigh more immediate benefits, like immediate consumption, and they, disregard, they don't weigh like long-term costs. 
I'm going to borrow a lot to pay this holiday, this vacation this week because that's coming right now and I'm going to enjoy that a lot. And the cost dies in the future. I don't care. I'm not going to think about that. If you understand these three things and how they affect debt, you are already better than most people. And that's kind of what, I, if people need to remember something, I think these are the three terms that people should be remembering. And then in research you've done to date, um, are there any trends you're seeing? A lot of people, more than actually I thought, are very, very debt averse. And this was very surprising to me because you're constantly hearing that so many people in the US and all around the world, they have debt. People use their credit cards all the time, student loans. You will really mind that, well, if people are borrowing so much, how is that then you find that people hate, uh, don't want to borrow at all? That goes a bit to the point that sometimes you borrow because you have no choice. If you want to get a college education in the US and you don't have the means, you need to borrow. There's no other way around. But that means that in other situations, maybe you want to borrow more money to just do a, another degree, like a master's. Maybe you want to fix your home. In those cases, people seem to be, I don't even want to touch that. It's really bad. Get it away from me. We actually seen a lot of this. At least on my research, I found that uh, at least 30% of people really, really dislike that. To a point that even if I tell you, look, here's a 20% interest rate guaranteed, but you have to borrow at 5%, 30% of the people say, I don't want that. I hate that too much. Interesting. That's a, that's a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, it's scary, right? But yeah. And it's hard to see the long-term versus short-term, as you said, on mm -hmm. the investment side. Is there a magic solution, you know, thinking about the brain, like is, are people wired a certain way? Or? There are different explanations that we think are good candidates. One is uh, this idea of uh, culture. Different countries have different cultures around it. And maybe part of that is because the way you grew up. I can tell you that in Muslim uh, societies, there's a huge stigma for borrowing and also for paying interest. The entire concept of uh, Islamic banking is basically not charging interest on borrowing. You have countries like Germany that, I mean, I'm not German, but I have many friends from there. They tell me that in German, the word for debt, it means guilt or shame. So when you are a kid, your parents are telling you, you should not borrow because that is shameful and you should feel guilty about it. And then when you're an adult, well, not surprised, you don't borrow. And this even, so this, we don't know for how long this has happened, but eventually, you know, this in the case of Germany, this makes it into the language. There's also another example in which this idea of debt being a bad thing make it, makes it even into the prayers that people have. There's examples like this all around the world where you see these behaviors around debt, and there's just enough, enough research done about that. Another point, like as I told you that in German, in German, the word for debt means guilt. German is at the same time one of the countries in Europe with the lower ownership of homes. This is a country where actually people tend to rent for a long time before actually be willing to borrow. Is this because they hate debt? We don't know. And I think it will be very exciting to know if that's the case. I don't think it's necessarily that Americans have a higher tolerance for debt. It's just the way that some institutions are designed is just, it gives you no choice. And I will say 70% of Americans have debt, but an overwhelming majority, they say, I will, I will prefer if there was a way in which I didn't have to get to go through debt in order to get these things. I'm sure many people will be very happy to go to college without having to borrow. People will be happy to maybe able to buy a car without having to borrow, but maybe they don't have the chance to do that. So what I'm trying to say is that Having a lot of debt doesn't mean that you have high tolerance for debt. Sometimes it means that you just have no choice and you have to borrow. Hopefully this conversation provided a little more context for how you think and talk about debt. It seems clear to me that people have a very different perceptions about debt, depending on where you live and how that culture views it. For example, whether it's considered normal in one's country to borrow for college or for a mortgage. Back here in the States, as housing prices, tuition costs, and the price of goods all trend upward, the topic of debt is likely to stay front of mind for most of us. Regardless of whether somebody is completely debt adverse and pays off loans immediately, or is comfortable carrying tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, it is important to understand the differences between healthy debt, like investing in a degree, and bad debt that might be nearly impossible to pay off. Ultimately, successful debt strategies will not be the same for everybody. I'd like to thank all of our participants, especially Alejandro Martinez Marquina, for taking the time to talk about debt with me. Until next time, I'm Ian Cohen from PayPal. Thanks for watching Money and the Brain.